Guys, I have no idea what that was about, but Colin, oh, okay. good day to you. <laughs> you well, I want to know, did that hurt when making all those sounds? What are those sounds so about? So 1600 Rally Car, okay? Oh, okay. It's like tiny CCs. How's it? Welcome to episode 73. Three. It's actually one. Because, no. what's one, what's Gary? One? Seven and three is ten. Yes. Which redacted is one. <laughs> so therefore, this is number one. However, it is Wednesday. It's six o'clock. Yes. We have taken this thing completely off piste. Welcome again to episode 73 of Waved Yellow. Gary, do you know what are we doing here? I know everything, Gary. What know, would you like me to confirm you, that I know? As you and I speak, yes. as you and I speak right now, yeah, Gary. Okay, there's a young South African sitting at Oatamba Airport. There are many, no, but, but this there's is, this one is a you, you have one in mind, no doubt. Okay, yeah, he's about to take off on a potential career in Formula One, and I'm talking here about Stuart White. Stuart White has got support from Sauber F1, currently the new name called Alfa Romeo Racing. He's off to France to go and race the first but round. But aren't they in Italy? Uh, well, he's or in, Switzerland? He's going, he's, going, he's going to Europe, okay? And Where the churches are burning? No. Well, they finished burning now. <laughs> Gary. No, no, hang it, a, it's hang seriously a, exciting, hang actually. And, he, and he's, yeah. off, he's off to go and race the Formula 4 European Series of, of, of FFSA. All right? Just to let you know, last year, he only did three rounds, and he finished 10th. How's that? Three rounds, he was number 10. Think about okay, it. Okay, so right? seriously, on, on a congratulations to Stuart White and Dave and their whole family. They put a bucket load of work into this and finally got some proper international recognition in that he is, and the wording is quite interesting, yeah. where Seb Vettel's little brother is a, um, a Salba Alfa Romeo development driver and Stuart is a, a driver supported by, um, Salba. by Salba Alfa Romeo. And what that means is he's got access to their resources and they, they open doors. You know, when you go along yeah. and you say, hey, I've got Alfa Romeo behind me, it, it opens doors. There's a whole lot of, of technical and engineering and simulator stuff mm. that is, is, I think it's absolutely fantastic. So, so congratulations, so Stuart. So what he does, he goes he go, he's, going, he's going testing. It's not bad for a ginger. No, not bad. He's going testing. He ends up coming back to South Africa, and a couple of days later, he's sitting at the FIA conference happening at Sun City as a young that is giving a speech and giving a talk about young the driver development within the FIA scenario. So this, then, hold on, let's just back up. Yeah. For those who, of us who know two fifths of five eights of not a lot about here what comes, this is. Yeah, comes my maths lesson. No, 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 maths. We're saving math. Remember, kids, maths and science, especially today's episode is called trigonometry look it up <laughs> can you spell that T -R no, 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 i can don't, don't i can it. i can okay, you can so this conference it's an annual conference organized by the fia and they go to different countries and everybody gets together and they talk stuff and they try and share a bit of knowledge about right. stuff yeah racing stuff yeah. Yeah. And of course, being part of the FIA, it's all like meh, 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 stuff. Meh, meh, stuff, and they're all like. Meh, meh. So, Stewie's going there to do a lot of uh, stuff. driver development stuff. He's going to talk about stuff. So, yeah. Gary, why are we in a blooming rally and, workshop? And, and just quickly, and just quickly. And then, when he's finished that, he's back off to France to go and spend five days with Saba on a training mission. So, talking about training, yes. Tasman Pepper's been testing been, the uh, W Girls Series. Rule. Yes. Do they? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Girls rule. Okay, if you say so, I'll... I'll Think about it. Every time you and I have a discussion, it happens to be... Gary, not going. Gary, Gary, it's, not it's going. a family show. Behave yourself. Yeah. I have been wrapped over my knuckles by, uh, by our legal department. They came to me and they said, please, can you refrain from any disparaging remarks? And I said, Ooh. I'll try, but sometimes the filter doesn't work. And actually, <laughs> the, little, the little rabbits in my head just go, quee! So... 
W Series is on the, 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 they've just wrapped up some testing. Tasman was, by all reports, awesomely quick. So that's pretty cool. What else happened is that um, Sheld final Linders, Sheld Sheldon, in Sheldon the and Christopher Aberdeen are out testing DTM at the moment. Yep. By the way. Yeah, Shh, Gary. Don't tell anybody. Okay, okay. okay. Real Signature certain. Motorsport put out a little, little thing yesterday that Sheldon was fast as. Shh, don't tell uh, anybody. That'll be freaking awesome. And look, when a guy goes for a test, and so here's a story. So Sheldon gets invited to the young driver's test for BMW, what, 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 what. And they've got a whole lot of guys in there, and he's a little bit nervous, and he goes out and he does a couple of laps. But first of all, their development, I mean, their factory driver goes and does like proper. No, he sets a benchmark. He, lap, does, a, eh? he does a benchmark. So right, there's your lap time. So Sheldon gets in the car, does a couple of things, and in, in his second session, boom. Quicker than the reference lap. So they come to lunchtime and they say, and this is in a test where he's trying to get a drive. <laughs> come to lunchtime, they say, oh, Sheldon, and as the chairmans do, yeah, you've, you've, we will not be driving again in this car. <laughs> so, and why not? But because you're not driving, we've made our choice. Yeah, you can go home now. <laughs> Actually, it wasn't you can go home, it was please come back into the transporter so we can sign you up. It was like the end of the first morning, it was absolutely magnificent. Yeah. Gary, yeah. there's like, what are those things that you put in a, you put batter in a thing and you put an iron, it's like a, an iron that clamps it down and makes little squares and then you Does put the syrup. Same, a waffle. Are, you, are, you, are we waffling? You waffling, Gary. I never waffle. Right, I now, speak intelligence. Okay. So, okay. so from that go to this. this. Okay, so we are here I'll see you guys, Nana. in George the Bonnet, Small Burgers Workshop. Why do we call him the Bonnet? Because he's probably the only guy. George, come here. George the Bonnet. <laughs> you are the only guy I know who's made the mistake of not checking that his bonnet is clipped down properly before uh, you did it in a rally car and you did it in a racing car. How does that feel? It's part of racing. Can no, it's plenty years of racing. And it's not happened. Uh, it happened more than that, <laughs> to be honest. So there I am thinking that you make the same mistake twice, but you've made it more than that. But anyway, <laughs> George. Um, Thanks for inviting us to share to a, a workshop. Our production department and, and location were, were seriously impressed with what we got. And we're standing next to an, a bear shell. So tell us the story, just to back up, guys. George hasn't been involved in track racing, but primarily now he's a rallyist because he likes dirt and stuff. So, and there's sweat involved as well. And there's duct tape and other stuff, Gary. Our other favorite, yeah. Which favorite? Tire reps? And obtainium. And obtainium. Yeah. <laughs> so we're standing next to the bones of a new rally car. Just very quickly, what's, what is this car and what's it for? So it's going to be a, it's a Polo, um, two liter, uh, with an H pattern box, Riga shocks, which we reckon is one of the best shocks for rallying in the world. Um, and yeah, we're building it to rent it out. And we have a list of people that's interested. Uh, one particular individual um, said he'll take it up for the season. So, have you got that in writing from him? No. Okay, so you're going to you, you're building a car that, if, if for instance the urge took me to come and drive in a rally, um, I could get a price from you. What is it sort of cost per event, George? Sure. Roughly. This is, uh, no, live, this is live TV. Yeah. No, <coughs> no, no, no. This uh, is live Facebook. It's better than TV. Yeah. And no, no, no. Just to give... Um, this, the idea with that is not like somebody says, oh my God, I want to go rallying and I haven't got a car. Now to buy a car, it's going to cost more than sure. a standard car. So, because I think it depends where you start. We started in regionals. I bought a car for 50,000 Rand. Uh, did some work on it and we started rallying. Okay. Uh, so the car is 50. Uh, if, probably. If I may, if I may, or is this a car here? That's the old car okay. after many, many years. And this is the one that you've, it's basically used up. It's finished. It's been georged. <laughs> the body, the <laughs> shell. That's why the new shell is here. And this is not georged yet. Not yet. Not yet. So um, bottom line is, so 50K, that's where we started. 
Pro probably running between 10 and 20,000 Rand a rally. Okay. You don't have to start and buy new tires at that point. So you get into the So if just talking on tires, you go and you run a stage and because you like seriously at the shop and you keep throwing tires at the, the car and those used tires I can come along and, and buy from you and go and run like the rest of the year on them. Yeah, there's there's a there's always a supply of used tires. So yes, absolutely. Even if you went to some of the suppliers like I don't know, does ATS sell rally tires? Indeed. What do you know, Gary? Do you know ATS? I've heard of them. They apparently supply certain stuff to certain people. Because they don't know us. But anyway, so maybe <laughs> maybe they ATS. Is, so if anybody knows somebody at ATS, give them like Gary's uh, our production departments and legal departments contact details because apparently they've lost it. So you can you can buy tires and. If I'm just starting off, can I buy like bits and pieces, like used stuff for my car? Yeah, so there's actually on Facebook is a rally page where the guys sell parts. And what's it called? Oh, rally. Rally parts for no, sale. No, 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 no. Rally, yeah. What okay, I'll it? tell you what, George, no, no, you'll go back and called, you'll put it in, called, in the comments. It's called SA Rallying. SA, but there's, there's multiple pages. So just search on rallying, you'll find most of them. But there's trust, one trust, specifically. Trust rally to get everything confused. Why don't you just have one page? <laughs> Why do you like rallying? Some individual said to me, so I've done track and I've done off road navigation um, before. He said to me, rally's king of motorsport. One night at a dinner and then I bought the car. Was, that, was, was he it? selling the car? No. Was that, was that your friend that's now playing in the sands of some Northern African uh, no, territory? No, 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 oh, okay. no, 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 because he's off-road. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just want to know because he does watch our show, you know. But. No, I do. He just, yeah, just find me. <laughs> so, yeah, and, and he called it a king of motorsport. He's done all facets of, of racing, and uh, I really enjoy it. I think you get a lot of value for your money. You get a lot more seat time. You're out there for two days racing effectively. Yes, you have service in between. But, but uh, from a from a support point of view, and it's quite interesting in the the and I want to talk to you a little bit later about the business of motorsport. The business of running a car, um, the business of sponsorship and the, the money side of it and how that um, flows into it. Because I think that there are many people who might have a a misconception that, oh, you stick your hand up and I want to sponsor and people flock to you. Yeah. As a, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. So just going, uh, this is a business opportunity that you've got here in, in terms of this car. And I think that, Gary, shall, shall we see if I can get in this car yeah, for a maths let's, lesson? Let's do that. So, George, bear with me for a minute. And this is, yes, this is Gary. I've been working with concrete all day, and my, I'm stiff as all. Are you cemented, bro? <laughs> so I'm going to sit inside this thing, and this is a bare shell. And just talking about the the, the motorsport angle of stuff, is that this car was ordered from Volkswagen Motorsport South Africa, and they take a a new Polo off the shelf, off the production line, whatever. And they then build into it, a, a, in this particular case, a chrome moly um, cage. Full FIA specification, it's properly welded. And the one thing about roll cages that I wanted to talk about, Gary, and this is where our maths lesson comes in, it's about triangles. Straight lines are relatively weak. So the one thing that you want to do, wherever you have tubes, is to build them into triangles so that you triangulate something and whatever force comes along here has got because now within with your maths you know that f you've got forces that have direction and magnitude so if there's a force that comes in here it moves up this um, um, tube and also down that tube and you'll see over here on the roof in terms of the triangulation you always have try and get the ends of tubes meeting at one point so any force that gets put in here gets split up into all sorts of things. So the strongest shape known to man, apart from a woman's mouth, is a triangle. I've got a couple of guys out there that might agree with that in relation to what Gary? you just said, but I won't go there. Gary, so I lived with danger, and sometimes she let me race. <laughs> so 
with, there's the, the story about the triangle. This is a proper cage. And the reason you have a cage, there's two principal reasons for a roll cage in a car. The first one, um, because it gets used more, yeah. is that you want to make it stiff. This is the Viagra of the car. It makes it, uh, the, um, it keeps the, essentially the four suspension points all where they where you design them and where you want them to be whatever the forces that you put in the car so that's the primary reason for building a skeleton inside the car the secondary reason um the secondary reason is when you throw the car away and when you have a crash in rallying generally the crash is of um, greater magnitude than track. It goes on for a long time. And trees, believe it or not, are incredibly strong, resilient, and they go nowhere. And you, the concept or the idea is that if you throw this car off the edge of the road and it hits trees, you want to be saved in it. And right now, this, this is foam that is, and this is an FIA grade of foam. Guys, Swimming pool noodles are not roll cage protection. This is, an, is a proper um, roll cage um, protection. And the idea with it is that it is designed to um, slow your head down when it hits it or your arms or any part of your body. And you, it ends up being strapped to any portion. The rules say in, in the FIA is you need this foam in between the roll cage and your body whether it's your legs, your arms, or your head that can hit it. Don't use pool noodles. Don't use any foam. Go to, Gary, shall we use a name? No, you a reputable motorsport parts supplier and ask for FIA roll cage padding. Do yourself a favor. Save your life. Use the right shit. Anyway. Hey. Ding a ling a ling a ling. Oh, man, Gary, it's your fault. Sorry, I just get a bit passionate with people who bitch and moan and then they use frickin' noodle pool noodles on roll cage. Get the right stuff. Because we're coming and we f if we find that you've got uh, not the right stuff, you're in troubles. Right, in so Gary. In troubles. That, no, oh my. Okay, so we won't watch you climb that because that could be embarrassing. Thanks, Gary. <coughs> that. Right, while Colin's extricating himself I'm out. From, from, from that rally car, I'm going to sort of like... So here's mount ourselves over here and carry on with our exciting discussion in relation to rallying in South Africa. George, so George, no, 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 come here, come George, here, come, come here. George, go and join him. I just need to do a couple of things so on the PC. So this is your, it's an R2, D2, what's it, R2? R2. What does R2 mean? It's a FIA um, uh, standard. <laughs> me, me. Do that, <laughs> but fast. I joke, because a 1600 bumblebee that's pinned on a dirt road is kind of quick. It's quick. I mean, we did the last rally uh, in Cape Town, Calidon, and they called it a Grand Prix. I mean, you, I thought that was a bit cheeky. <laughs> fifth gear, and you do corners one, two, and three, which I can explain to you guys if you like, um, which is 10, 20, 30 degrees, pretty much pinned. So, okay, so if I say to you, there's a, a nine left, that's a 90 degree left. Yeah. So, okay, so now you've got the, the angle of the corner. Maths, you see, you need your degrees. What about the speed? How do you, how does your navigator, co-driver, because you, within, in rallying, you're allowed to go around the course and you make pace notes. And those pace notes tell you where there's danger. And be careful, your bonnet might fly over or you might roll the car. Um, and they also, you can get a gauge of speed on it. So how do you communicate the level of speed? on? So if we've got a, a left nine. And talk us through an instruction. So, so let me take you through. So instructions, so direction instructions is one to nine. So that's degrees. Ten, one, two, three, we generally flat taps. Okay, but we do a recce. So the national guys do a recce. So you, you go through all the stages with, I won't, not allowed to say it, yeah, but a, possibly a rental or somebody's bucky. You wouldn't use a rental car, no, I mean. Never, never. Um, anyway, so you go through those stages and you look at the notes with your navigator 
and you improve on it. Okay, because it can be a mistake. So you personalize your notes and, and you say, okay, fine, on this jump, I'm going to go flat out over there or I'm going to slow down a bit. Yeah, so off camber, that caution is, is bigger or less than it should be. So you've got directional changes. You've got cautions, one, two, and three. One, we generally ignore two, depending on the car and what shocks you have. Three, you pay attention. You slow down. And how do you do the speed? So pretty much you rev it as you... No, no, no. But I'm, I'm saying like you've got a, a left nine and how, do you, how does your navigator tell you... Is it the degree, the angle of the corner that dictates the speed? Yeah. So pretty much... I mean, obviously, if it's a long straight into a left nine, there's a countdown. So you go as hard as you can, late braking, and then left nine, that's up to me how, how quick I go through that. Okay, but remember, there's a lot of instances where you can't see what's coming. So that trust It's me. just like life. <laughs> yeah, so we do it for two days non-stop. So that trust relationship with your navigator is absolutely cr uh, critical. Who's navigating for you this year? Carolyn Swan. Gary, he has a woman again. So how do you feel? You're married, aren't you? Yeah. So how do you feel that when you're at home, you get told what to do? Because clearly women are the bosses at home. And then when you go and you play your racing stuff, you also get told what to do. But henpecked. Uh, it works. <laughs> <laughs> For now. <laughs> maybe, maybe, George. That's why you're still married. And I'm not. So, right. Let's... We've got an instruction, and the distance of a stage, what sort of, what is the typical distance of a rally stage in South Africa? Okay, so it's, we, so we actually start on a Friday afternoon, around about two. The rally we're going to next is a um, Africa rally, so we'll start, we'll race the whole Friday, but generally all our other rallies start around about two o'clock. We race until eight, nine o'clock. So we do night stages. So the night stages are sometimes really short because we do it in towns, at shopping malls. With yeah. curbs in close attendance. All that kind of stuff, yes. So this rally, let's just, um, this is the, they're calling it what, Rally of South Africa? It is the old, it began its days as the Molly Slip Rally. It's the mood of a big rally in Nilspreit Sabi area. So it began as the Molly Slip Rally. Are we allowed to mention Molly Slip in your workshop with all your sponsors? Too late to ask now. Well, there you go. Hold on a second. But as long as I get it then became that other oil company that we are not allowed to mention in yeah. terms of motorsport because they treated, they were good at motorsport. But when you exit, there's a way. I am led to believe, yes. my sources say, <laughs> that they sucked when they left and they dropped a whole lot of people, a whole lot of drivers. So to that oil company that you and I pay taxes to, Gary, I have two words to say. Good evening. Yeah. Uh, good okay. evening. Right. So it was called That Rally. And then after it was called That Rally, it became, there's a, another, this, the York Timbers Rally. Because York Timbers, they actually play a major important part of it because they like provide their forests. They, they one of the landowners, yeah. And do you, and then, so now it is not the York, it, it, it is the Rally of South Africa supported by York Timbers. Do you prefer forest rallies or mini rallies? Forest. Why? Roller coaster. But the trees are hard. <laughs> trees are hard. <laughs> 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 Millies also hurt, believe me. <laughs> Millies? <laughs> rallies in the Millie fields. So there's three. Sort of, there are four basic kinds of rallies in South Africa. There's the sugarcane rallies, the mili and them and millifield rallies are pretty much the same where the roads are, de are defined. And then you've got the whoops and the flow and the, the echo in a forest. It is unbelievable, awesome. isn't it, George? It's awesome. I mean, I've broken out once or twice in my rally, and you stand there in the middle of nowhere in a forest, and the cars come past you. It's really, it's really awesome. And to drive it even better. P is also good. I mean, that's also in the forest. P is a very, very fast rally as well. There you've got to, like, um, take a bit of a deep breath, eh? Absolutely. And grow a pair. Uh, two. <laughs> so, let's just have a quick look at this car. Gary. Just before you do that. Yes. 
Do you know, do you know a guy called Paul Clark? I do, PDM. Who? Paul Clark. Yes, do you know him? Is an absolutely awesome No, no, hang on a second, I'm talking. Guy. Yeah, I, I just do. asked, it's a yes or no question. Yeah, I do. You know him, okay. Yeah. He, he is... He's, he's watching us and he says... Paul. It's about time we got back into a workshop. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Paul, mm. I don't know where you are, where you're based. I want to get you on this show so you can tell us about a couple of let things. Me, let me... About, about this guy. Let me, I know you know a lot of things about... Let me tell you a couple of highlights about um, Paul Clark. Uh, was principally involved in the Chef Can-Ams uh, as, a, as an engineer in the early days of, of his engineering with General Motors um, and then went to uh, Nissan, Datsun at the time, was principally involved in putting a, a six-cylinder Skyline engine in, into a, or six-cylinder engine into a Skyline, made the fastest cop car in the world. A road car back then with side drafts. Jimmy Burt was... Anyway, it's a long story. Great guy. Paul, thanks for watching. We do need to, to catch up. So, talking about engines, and Paul was, was big on, on engines. Gary, can you bring that, the, that huge camera set that we've got here? While, I, while, I, while I'm going to get this whole camera rig over to you, I have, uh, a, I have a question for George. There's a guy called Carl Perkins online. George, do you know him? Mm, I do. Okay, I don't know. I don't know whether he's is is he a good guy or whatever it is. I, I don't know him personally, but the things he's saying online it could go either way. You know okay, I mean? <laughs> he, say, he says good evening, Larry. <laughs> like nice to see you again. And he says George is a good guy. George is a good guy. He's allowed us in here. So George, talk us through. This is a sixteen hundred um, engine because it's it's like got little. Why is the exhaust manifold so thin? Oh, gee, Colin. <laughs> yeah. You're probably asking the wrong guy. Okay, so this, this part of, of the thing you're not really concerned about. It, there's things that go, what's, what do they call it? Suck, push, bang, blow. Uh, you made a pretty good sound effect when we opened the show. Why don't you just give us that sound again? No, we don't want to do that because we respect cold engines and we don't want to take them through a, a cold start, the worst time for an engine. Anyway, so he has an engine. There's stuff. The air goes in here and the air goes out there and these things go spark, spark. These things go bang, bang. And underneath here, they go, they suck. It they, is. They it's go suck, rockety, rockety, rockety. It's suck, push, bang, blow. And I'm more interested in the kilowatts, obviously. In the kilowatts. <laughs> how many, from a 1600, how many kilowatts does this thing have, George? So, so more or less. Uh, more, yeah. or less more or less. More or less. 110 kilowatts. So, there are a lot of people who like buy Golf GDRs and they take them downtown and they get them modified, they take the catalyst off and they make the most horrendous noises, that wing, bang, whatever. Isn't that, a, isn't that a chip thing? You buy a bang chip? No, well, you start off with a chip on one shoulder. And then you, put, and you, put then you that, buy a GTI and you lower it to the ground. And you put the chip on the other shoulder that's, and between that that's why, bang. Gary, that's why it took us so long to get here because we got stuck behind a GTI and your brother slowed it to the ground. <laughs> Slam, put. Yeah, anyway, so, came to a pedal, stopped but the how for do you? Hours. So these guys, they go race around the streets and they think their cars are fast and they make like 200 kilowatts. How do you relate, how do you tell them that this thing will scare the bejesus out of them? So, I mean, on dirt or on tar, I mean, it's the reality is we get serious kind of kilowatt out of this engine compared to the standard. For a 16, yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. I mean, we, we run a management system called Motec, which is a full racing system. The cheapest and system in the world, I believe. Yeah, apparently. Um, but yeah, it's really important to run Motec. Um, we've got a sequential gearbox. You get Who, is that a SADEV box? Yeah, SADEV. Um, and it's important to, I mean, we, at one point, we used to service the gearbox after every rally. MoTeC, once we started using MoTeC, we started saving on the gearbox. So and, and why is that, George? What is the, what is the engine management system got to do with a gearbox? So you've got to set up your blipping with the um, with a sequential box. So, so is that when, just, just, uh, let's just talk when we pull away, you've got a clutch and you go, and then it goes, me. You get to the rev limit, which is about what, seven and a half? About eight. Awesome. How, how much can this rev before it goes bang? 
banged it once or twice before. No, I mean, like, <laughs> uh, this, it's, it, is, uh, it is regulated. Everybody, so. thought, everybody <laughs> thought you're talking about the bang in the gear chains. Are you talking about the bang as an No, when it like explodes. Well, no, because so no, it's kaput. We're talking about Paul Clark. He has a 1500 Opel Cadet from 1923, I think it is. It's almost as old as he is. And that thing revs to about 9,200 revs. So you end up, you get to your rev limit, let's call it 8,000, and you call for the next gear. So you pull the gear lever. Talk us through that sequence that helps you to save the gearbox. Okay, so obviously sequential gearbox, you don't use the clutch. Okay, you'll pull off. We've got um, launch control on this car with different settings. Soft, medium, hard. That's like... It's proper. I was just thinking soft, medium and hard. It's like your eggs in the morning. <laughs> I'm glad we're sticking to that and not chopping it. <laughs> so, so obviously once you've pulled off, um, then it's left foot braking pretty much all the way. That's rallying. That's a game. You got to, you, I never used to use it on track. No, no, no we're talking about the engine so, management thing. So, okay. so then obviously you don't use your clutch to use this gearbox. I mean, just back and forth. That's it. And as you engage the stick on the gearbox, it will have to manage that to make sure the gears change. And that's what the Motic system does. So it cuts the power momentarily, so you haven't got the dogs, the dogs of a gearbox, my remote control. So essentially, you end up, you want dogs to mesh like this, yeah. and they can't mesh when one is driving power. So you cut the power so they can that's slip it. in. Yeah, as the actress said to the bishop. Family so, show, though. Family so, show. Though. Um, and then when you go down, it goes. Bing, 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 bing. No, no, we're not going to start. Respect a cold engine. Okay, can we go and have a look on the inside of the car, the office? Gary, you, which way are we going to go? I'm going this way. Right. So we're over here. Now, in some ways, I'm. Half familiar with this because we spoke to our dear friend Peter Solberg, who had a similar kind of thing. So this is your handbrake. Yeah. So cut brake. So that. When you say cut brake, what does that mean? Okay. So it locks the rear wheels. So if you go around, uh, say you go down a, f a farm fence straight down, and you've got to go through a gate and come back the other side, you'd use that cut brake. So you can make lucky handbrake turns. You can. Freaking awesome. Okay. So the. You've got a lever that operates another lever into a master cylinder that, and as you push this this way, it pushes brake fluid out to the, um, to the rear calipers and locks it. And then this other stick here, George, that's the, the gear lever. What's this trigger thing at the front here? So, so to get it into reverse. Obviously, if you bang it forward and you don't have that lever, you can bang it into Colin, reverse. Colin, just uh, put your finger on there and move that lever. So, so, okay, thank you. No, it's just a reference from a camera point of view because it's pretty dark, so people can actually see what it is. Thank you. Gary, is this the dark side of the moon? Uh, no, it's and the dark side that, of the car. I see you've got different seat belts in here. You've got say belts on the one side and um, OMPs on the other. Is there any particular reason for that? No, that's at that point what we could get hold of. So, uh, love OMP, but... Uh, are they a good brand? Are they reputable? Apparently so. I was just ask a guy Colin? called Heinz Berzer. Colin? Yes, Gary. Uh, let's leave those guys out of this for now. Okay, so, right. We've got, and you've also got a power management system over here. So it, it's taken away the fuse box and you just push a button and that the computer um, calls for that function, electric function that you've asked for. So, obviously, that's part of the MoTeC system. So, literally. All your controls in the car gets controlled from there. Reason being in if the I middle... May, if I may ask, is there any chance we could put power on so that that yep. lights up and people can see what it looks like? Just flip Gary, so we lift this one up down. and we... Flip it down. There we are. So, and the, the dash starts coming to life. And, and the disco going on there? So, okay, so we've got... Um, so that disco is when that, those lights are fully engaged. That's when I change gears. So we rev this car up to eight, and then I change. Up to eight, I change. What do you so see in front of you? Until you get to eight, it's blue. Yeah, let me just see there. 
Um, no, the, you the can't. Yeah, uh, written, yeah. It, it 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 literally lits up like a Christmas tree. Okay, cool. Then I know I need to change. All right. And there's one in the middle, yeah, above the panel. That small one, same story. Okay, and then so that panel in the middle gives you all the functionality of the car: wipers, um, your launch control, your lights, your spotlights. Um, Cleaning, obviously, we sometimes eat. Does it ever mud. go? Does it ever GoPro switch on there? Uh, there's a GoPro above it. I, I see there's a GoPro mount. I just want to know if there's a GoPro switch. No, no, no. And then we, so so you control the whole car from the flickers, everything. And the reason being in the middle, your navigator can get to it as well because okay. there's certain functions. There. And then, Colin, that's freaking awesome. You're pointing at something up here. What is this? Gary, stuff? these are are the the um, control units for the intercom because there's so much noise in these cars, okay, and cool. there's there's no sound deadening, and you get noise from the dirt and all yeah. the rest of it. You have an intercom built into your helmet, and then these are the control units, and you can turn your volume up and down, and and all that. Really, really cool. So, Stilo, I've got some some pretty pretty tricks um, sound deadening stuff um, because it's known that they from a fatigue point of view that heat and sound actually damage your your cognitive abilities so you know loud music or loud stuff in the car it's not good for concentrating okay, but now, anyway just while you're there you got your hand on something that was is that the same foam we were this is the about same foam earlier on this is the fia grade of foam okay so it's missing from above here and clearly that uh, there's another piece that goes in there because the rules say it needs to be anywhere where a part of your body or your head can hit something immovable. This other thing here the, with these bright disco lights, that's the odometer or the trip meter. So it will tell you um, the distance that you've traveled and uh, so that you can follow because on a rally the notes are all about distance and so you need that uh, pretty accurate. At the bottom there... Down here, where with, with uh, it's dark. It's a bit too dark here. Yeah. navigator. The one button on the left is for the windscreen washer, and the other one on the right is for the uh, wipers. And that is, so he is operates that, that the is, wipers with his feet? Yeah, I don't have time. Awesome stuff, because you're peddling this car, George. Freaking awesome. Right, so let's just open the back here, the boot. And you know what I really like, George, uh, is that this is a real workshop. There's stuff here and, and all the rest. Right, so in the boot of the car, there's a plastic bag, a sponsor's banner, and, and all that stuff. Gary, what, oh, what is that, George? Environmental mat. So whenever we get uh, to service, not to service, but in park for May and that, you put this, Navigator puts this underneath the front of the car okay. for environmental reasons if it's oil leaking. Uh, friggin' greenies take over everywhere. So we've got to have the, like the sponsor's banner, the environment. Okay, in the back here, we've got, again, roll cage. And remember the triangles that we spoke yeah. to? And you need a proper solid mounting for the seat belts. And there's a particular way of, of mounting these things here. And then this bag over here is, is for the, the crash dark, helmets I, I think, and, and all of that. You get yeah. the dust of it. Those are your helmet bags that when you're going... Be, is that when you're on a liaison stage, you put your helmets in there? Yeah, so normally... Sometimes um, liaison between the stages is quite far, sometimes 30, 40 k's. Then we can... That's almost like from Fourways to Benoni. Because <laughs> Benoni, welcome to the Benoni um, Publicity Association. Benoni, we rock. Yeah, we, yeah, we, go, we yeah. know that. Um, thanks a lot for that. So the boots from Benoni, don't come to Fourways, brother, because we've got fart clubs here. <laughs> so, okay. so, so obviously so in some rallies we carry up to 600 kilometers in total, 300 odd racing kilometers and then it goes down from there stages which you asked me earlier um so the short stages is could be three five night stages and then it goes the general stages around about 10 12 can go up to 42. do you prefer racing at during the day or at night george no day is better i mean night. some guys say that it's better when you in a mountain pass that it's at night, so you can't see the part where you're going to fall off. <laughs> it's true. I mean, there's some scary areas where we, uh, yeah, proper drop-offs. Um, and I've got vertigo, so yeah. it doesn't help. So, well, when you get, once you start going down, it doesn't matter whether you've got vertigo or not, you're not going to stop. Just a quick one. I just want to say hi to a couple of guys because they're actually quite important. Oaks is sitting in the middle of Germany watching us. So we've got Calvin van der Linde online, and we got... Wim Henny is online. He's watching us as well. Hello, Wim. Hello, Wim. And the reason why Sheldon's not online is because he's testing a DTM. Hello, Calvin. Would you ever like to drive a DTM? Absolutely. I love 
done that series. Okay. Now so at- George has just pointed out here, there's, this is a high-performance hydraulic jack. Okay. So when you need to change wheels, you've also got a, an electric or battery-powered gun. It's in the boot, properly tied down, no doubt, because in one of these moments, you know. So you've got a, a jack, 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 and then you also need to put a little board out here. And this one is so fuss on, you, you know, I don't want to pull it. I might break it. George, don't worry. It's, so and in case you need an stuck, accident. Where do you do that? You put it on the ground, you put it on the roof of the car. What do you do with it? Okay, so, so, so if you have an accident, you'll pull that. And you'll show the green circle if everything's okay, or the red cross if there's problems. Oh, okay. And is there a rule that somebody's obliged to stop when they see a red cross? Absolutely. We've got to stop. We've got to stop and, and see how we can help. We also have tracking devices in. So there's a red button if we're both unconscious or whatever. It's not that bad, guys. Um, you can hit the red button. But if you're, wanna, un- if you're unconscious, if you're how are you, you going to press the button? Well, the hopefully button. one of us make it. <laughs> oh, okay. But uh, hold on a minute. Uh, part of the, the sponsors of the National Rally Commission um, is C-Track, I believe. Yeah, they and are. they've got this tracking thing so that mm-hmm. if, I, I, if I had a site, I could, I mean, if I, my computer didn't get some idiot threw water all over it, I could log onto my computer and I could follow the cars through the stages. Absolutely. So you'll know exactly. So the teams can actually look where we are. Um, in the comm system, I can even talk to the teams. Obviously not during the stage, but after the stage, I can phone Trevor through my phone Bluetooth. Colin, keep on with that. I'm just going to walk back to the, front of the car here while you guys are checking. Trevor, and uh, do what I need to do on the Trevor PC. Bland runs the... He builds and prepares and services the cars. Yeah, so Trevor has his own business. He looks after my cars and... Um, Obviously, at a rally, he runs the back office. So rallying is a, is a tripartite, as I call it. It's a driver, it's a navigator, and the car prep. So those three elements are critical to finish a rally. Um, yeah, I mean, these cars go through fairly hell in a rally and the conditions we take them through. So it's, yeah, it's got to be ready. It's got to be. George, we actually going to the uh, rally of South Africa and... I think the National Rally Commission has invited us there, and I, I'm, I'm quite excited. I haven't been to a rally since um, a long, long time ago when the Quattros were still dominating. Um, I'm looking forward to it, and uh, Gary, I know that our, the, I'm getting all sorts of signals from production about timing and, and that sort of thing. Huh, are we? <laughs> well, no, I mean, the Oaks are... George, we need to... Pick up a discussion on the, the, the business of motorsport. And I think that it would be fair to that subject if we sat down in a quiet environment and just worked through some of the your thoughts on business of motorsport. Because you've brought Shield and Q20 and CRC. You have probably the most sponsored car, well, apparently the most sponsored car in the world. And I'd like to try and get you to share some of your info for those people who are wanting to go racing and need some some help i'm more than happy to do that George? Um, yeah keep on going sorry okay so colin i think at the end of the day it's it's really tough to get sponsors you've got to have a big list and you've got to persevere and it's not about what they can do for you but what you can do for them absolutely so um happy to say it on the channel I mean, I continuously give back. The more I can try and give my sponsors, you know, the the longer the relationship. Because you've had Shield for a number of years, and they just seem to be growing and growing. And quite interesting, and it's not just a plug for Shield, but the number of products, and it's similar to, to the Toyota workshop, where they've integrated the use of product of their sponsors in the, the, the workshop, and they, don't, they use their sponsors' products, not other uh, products. Absolutely. So, I mean, between Shield, Q- Q20, Godot, we, you know, Castrol, um, we use all their products really actively. We even give them feedback on some of the products, um, which they appreciate. Uh, we, we obviously do all the Facebook stuff. You know, we meet with the guys fairly regularly. Um, and then we go the extra mile um, and we, we go to shows. 
where we represent them, take our cars with. You do like wheel spins down the street and handbrake turns and stuff like that? We've done, we've done I'll mention one, VDAP Fest, where Shield was a sponsor. So we take our cars, they are truck, uh, you know, mingle with the guys, actually put the cars on for competition. Uh, the guys love that. I mean, they all street. Both the, both the spectators and your sponsors like that? Absolutely. I mean, you get, those are the guys, the street racers, it's there. And the show and shine guys. You know, he has a race car and you take them through it and that experience. So that's one example. We, we, um, we obviously do things at uh, the motor show with Kailami, um, Festival of Motoring. Our sponsors really appreciate that. Gives them a, a platform to come in. So you've got to do, find stuff where you can work for people. So, Gary, yes. it's, I believe, a busy week for us. It is. Because and, and there's lots of things coming up. Just, just before you go. There's a hill climb. Where is that hill climb, no, Gary? No, no, wait, 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 wait. Before we get to the hill climb, do you know Mike Nathan? Yes. Okay. He wants to know, have you ever had the balls, excuse the language, ladies, gentlemen, and children, okay, <laughs> to even get into a rally car's navigator seat? It's as boring as circuit racing. <laughs> so, no, I don't think so. I no, really no. don't. You're, you're so a couple of times I had to coach people. Uh, so I had to sit in that seat in the rally. Scary as hell, eh? <laughs> it's scary. I don't want to do it. And what? I used to navig navigate for Terence Marsh in the off-roads for two years. That must have been scary. <laughs> that was... No, no. How's it, Terence? Colin? <laughs> okay, when you finish, one for you. Rick Asferi, who happens to run a lot of stuff in South African rallying, Okay, cool. Statement. Rumor has it, you guys will have a ride in one of the rally cars alive during the shakedown stage of the Rally of South Africa. Bring it on. Uh, so th uh, uh, we get to drive it. No. Fucking awesome, no, no, Gary. No, no, yes, no, no. yes, no, you, yes. I'm sitting in the navigator Gary, seat and you're I sitting in the back where the no, helmets go. No, because, I mean, you can ask many, many people. I haven't crashed cars. For a long time. Yeah, yeah, that'll be that's, absolutely that's awesome. Good. That's only because you haven't driven them for a long time. <laughs> George, you would lend me your car just for a shakedown, wouldn't you? That one. Because <laughs> it's been George. <laughs> it's broken. Guys, waffles. So, tomorrow we are at the Jaguar Experience because we're talking about Jaguar Samola Hill Climb. There's some pretty cool cars that we've got there, apparently, Gary. There's some pretty cool drivers there. Yeah. And then... There's two shows tomorrow I'm led to the production. De the scheduling department sent me SMSs. It's like my phone's been going ding, 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 ding. And there's well, another the show. doesn't go wing, 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 bop, bop. No, it's mm. No, 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 uh, no. We'll, we'll do that. that. Yeah, so we're going to do that. And then, uh, well, you've got your own mic. You don't no, I've got mine. my own mic. So we're going to do that. We're going to be chatting with uh, Andre Besaidnote, who's got that awesome Formula One looking type of car. Gary, it's a single-seater Gould hill climb attack car see that's why i have him he's got the facts and then uh, that's at four o'clock tomorrow afternoon and then six o'clock tomorrow night we're going to have a look at a chevron b19 of franco Scabunt. i want to know what the chassis number of that car is we will find out tomorrow night and if if it's real i, I believe i'm led to believe it is yeah. um because that's dick bennett's one of his, the finest pieces of work amazing motor yeah. car right and then and then and besides that then next week we are going to a workshop you and I haven't seen yet, but I believe it's amazing. And we're going to have a look at a... Some clues? A new rally car that is being built here in South Africa or being assembled in South Africa. Built. Under built. Built, yeah. Yeah. We're going to have a look at that car. So it's rallying again tomorrow. I mean next week. Next week. And then, and then we're going to go next week, Thursday, to the launch of an amazing GTR. Okay. That's got something to do with the Chevron. Yes. So that's where you are. So, so it's busy, busy, busy. Yeah. So and you, then you know what I have to do? Yeah, you've got to go and do your stuff. Yeah, I'll be, do my stuff. Before we go anywhere, just everybody out there, have an awesome long weekend. When you find the Easter eggs, keep one or two for Colin and I because we're working flat out. No, I can't, Gary. I'm like George, porky already. Thank you for your time. Thank you so okay. much. Squire, thank you. Do, do your you stuff. So, George? No. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't. I can't go through another heat cycle unless it's going to be used. So, George, thank you very much. Anyway. No, no, please don't. Thank you very much for your time, your honesty, and allowing us to poke our noses where, where we did. And good luck for the um, Rally of South Africa. And I hope to see the car in similar condition at the end of the race. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks for a great job.
Colin, just, right. before, just before you go, just Jerry. for all you guys out there, I know you can see this. This over here is a Trevor Bland Racing Workshop win. This is where it happens. This is Trevor Bland. And I'm going to give you a quick pan to this side over here because he does a lot of other things as well. Okay, he looks after some polo cups, so he does a couple of other things. But this is what Trevor Bland is about. So any of you guys ever need to have something done, please feel free to contact these guys. They allowed us into their space, so I've got to give something to them. Colin, from me, thank you very much. Right, that's um, the end of episode 73 of Waved Yellow. Thanks for joining us. If there are any questions, I mean, we really do appreciate the feedback that you give us, even when you just say hi. And, uh, but give us some comments, queries. If there's stuff that you really want us to go and look at, um, let us know, and I will put it into our, our production department and research, and they'll sort something out. Have a great weekend. We'll see you tomorrow at whatever o'clock it is, but uh, have an awesome one, and thanks for watching. Cheers, guys.